It seems artificial intelligence is in every business headline today. Artificial intelligence, as you know from the content I posted on this channel, is an amazing opportunity for IT leaders and business leaders in general. But AI does have some flaws, especially as AI is being utilized today. Generative AI models, such as ChatGTP and Google's BART, are being used way too confidently, in my opinion. Let's take a look at the flaws of generative AI models. There are 10 flaws in AI generally, and generative AI specifically, that we need to be aware of as we move forward and begin to implement some of these technologies. I'll save the biggest one for last. It was very surprising to me when I came across it. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG, and while I work for ARG, this video is my own and does not represent the views or opinions of my employer. This channel is dedicated to helping business leaders make great technology decisions. What prompted me to do this video on the current flaws in AI is a book I read on a plane about four days ago. When I fly, I read. Last week, I downloaded a book onto my phone and thinking it would take me a couple of hours to read during an upcoming flight. I settled into my seat, popped open the book on my phone, and was immediately disappointed. The book was clearly written by AI. Now, it was the only book I downloaded, so I plowed ahead. And boy, it was a tough read. It was so boring, so common, so robotic. It was even incorrect in several places. I mean, glaringly incorrect. Uh, for example, the book suggested that a business can be valued using gross revenues or EBITDA, EBITDA essentially being operating earnings, using the same multiple. The book was using gross revenue and EBITDA interchangeably. Now, this book was targeted at small business owners in a field generally populated by people without much in the way of finance or accounting background. I couldn't help but feel the confusion this book would cause for people who take its contents at face value. So I decided to take a break from my AI cheerleading and discuss some of the limitations of AI that exist in the wild today. There are a few bigger decisions today than how to use AI effectively in your business operations. AI has a ton of potential, and I'm a huge believer that it will transform the way many businesses operate. However, today's implementations of AI, particularly generative AI, have some significant deficiencies that we as users need to use caution around. We just need to be educated consumers and realize that AI is not a solution, it's a component of a solution. So the first problem is bias. You don't know how much bias there is in the AI models and algorithms. Bias is generally imperceptible, and it's a steering of results or output towards a specific outcome or away from a specific outcome. If you're using AI to generate content that's highly familiar to you, you might be able to identify the bias fairly easily. But if your content generation is around a less familiar topic, be careful not to take the AI output as 100% accurate. Where conclusions are stated, for example, carefully consider the conclusion, carefully consider if the conclusions align with third-party resources you trust. Problem number two, we don't know how the AI gets its results. We don't understand the algorithm. We can't unpack the algorithm and understand where the information that the AI is presenting to us is being generated, and therefore it's hard for us to audit, substantiate, or validate the results generated by the AI platform. This is a broad problem across various platforms, and quite honestly, it's only going to get worse. So, uh, so AI generative platforms in particular are great tools to start with, but if you're going to use it for specific factual purposes, those facts need to be independently validated. Asking the AI to source its information is possible, but it's tough to get specific answers and probably faster just to independently value validate key information on your own. All right, third issue. AIs are very costly. The chat GTP uh, that OpenAI has developed, its version 4 platform costs over $100 million to develop. So it's going to be very expensive for your organization to implement a standalone platform in the short term. The solution here is twofold. First, it's very important that we look for opportunities for our, within our AI strategy to make sure that we're finding the maximum ROI potential. This gives the best chance to support what were initially some very high costs. 
The second part of the solution is to use an AI service provider that can leverage pre-existing capabilities. This is about not reinventing the wheel and getting economies of scale from someone who's done this before. Problem four is repetitive answers. The generative AI platforms are not good at providing unique answers to subtly different prompts. Uh, I mean, like talking or asking a GTP platform, for example, is the sky blue? And then asking it separately, how blue is the sky? You're going to pretty much get the same answer without a lot of nuance. Problem number five is falsification and potential malicious, malicious usage. The issue of deep fakes is very real, and it's becoming harder and harder to discern something that's been generated from an AI platform versus an authentic piece of work. Images, even movies combined with audio, are virtually lifelike, and it's very difficult for anyone to figure out how to separate reality from a generative AI-created image. But the deep fake issues does not stop with celebrities and politicians. News sources are being impersonated. Well, I'm not sure there'll be a solution to this other than getting your news from a variety of outlets. We will all be fooled by something eventually. Problem number six, AIs can sometimes make things up if they don't understand a prompt. They can do what's referred to as an hallucination, which is essentially pulling together various information from different sources, attempting to respond to the problem by creating very different and an artificial result. So if you're going to use a generative platform in your AI strategy, you need to validate information before you put the results into operation. Never publish anything unless it's been thoroughly validated and proofread. Problem eight, copyright and intellectual property infringement. The generative AI platforms that are out there today have been developed by scanning and collating vast amount of information that's available on the public internet. The AI then takes that information and combines it, consolidates it, aggregates it into a supposedly unique response, but there's no guarantee that those responses are unique. And there's a substantial issue right now with some early lawsuits already being pursued by original content creators to prevent these generative platforms from using their content and creating responses for user prompts. Problem eight. I think I just said problem eight before. That was problem seven. This is actually the real problem eight. Problem eight is static information. Chat GTP 4, version 4, makes it clear that it shouldn't be relied upon for any information after 2021, which is presumably when it started aggregating information from the internet. We have no idea how old the information it ingested was or is. Now, these generative platforms will become better and better at ingesting and incorporating more recent information, but you have to understand that when you're using a chat GTP type service, it could be very old, somewhat static data that you're getting in response. Issue nine is pretty well understood by most IT leaders, but for the benefit of the broader leadership in your organization and for completeness of this list, I have to mention data ownership and security. Generally, when you put something in an AI that resides in the public domain, you lose ownership and control of that data. Also, when you generate content from an AI in the public domain, you do not own that data. So we need to be extremely careful in terms of data governance and intellectual property when we're using AI. Now the last issue that surprised me. Number 10 uh, issue with AI is this, and it's the most interesting and possibly even concerning issue I've come across. I believe this will be resolved over time, but early on, especially for people who are concerned about the environment, it's a deep concern. AI platforms right now consume a huge amount of electricity, the same amount of electricity to operate the platform as it takes to power a small city. And when I say the platform, I'm referring to Chat uh, GTP, the open AI platform. About 35,000 homes could be powered by the electricity consumed by the open AI platform. That's a small city of about 100,000 people. The electricity used just for the basic inquiries that ChatGTP4 is supporting today is enormous. As the value proposition and applications grow, of course, power consumption is going to grow larger. We already know that, for example, Bitcoin is a huge power hog. But Bitcoin alone with its distributed ledger architecture consumes about as much power as the country of Norway. 
So how do we support these super powerful platforms that consume large amounts of energy? Well, number one, they should be located near renewable energy sources, such as Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas, which gets its energy from the Hoover Dam, and I hope the Hoover Dam doesn't dry up anytime soon, but it's a great source of renewable, essentially free energy that's going to be available for the next 100 years. Clean and substantial energy sources will allow AIs to reach their future potential. And without those, I'm not certain AIs can grow for uh, forever. So AI, generative AI in particular, is a great and very, very exciting technology. I'm 100% on board that it will be an extremely constructive addition to your business operations. But you have to understand its current limitations. And there'll be future limitations. Additional limitations will appear on the horizon as some of these early limitations are resolved. So it's going to be a moving target that you'll have to keep an eye on over time, which is why you need an AI organization or an AI team within your organization to manage all of these developments. Despite its limitations, AI seems to be a major part of our future. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And thank you very much for doing that in advance. And if you want to reach out and talk more about this or any of the topics I have on my channel, my contact information is in the description of this video. And lastly, if you want to find your way back to this channel in the future, the best way of doing that is hitting that subscribe button. That will allow you to find your way back at your convenience. Thanks very much for watching. And I hope you have a great day.